Selamat pagi semua. A very good morning. Uh, and welcome to this uh, special session of uh, blended learning at UMS where we do some uh, reflection as well as some uh, upgrading among ourselves. Okay. By the way, uh, we would like to also welcome our new member over here, okay, uh, Dr. Adila from uh, Faculty Science Makanlan dan Pemakanlan. Okay. And uh, Dr. Chin, the worker by Dr. Wan Saman. Dr. Wan Saman, okay. Uh -huh. Dr. Wan Saman, have you come to such kind of... Do you know one another here? Uh, tak kenal, huh? <laughs> okay, so I think very quickly, uh, we just uh, mention our name again and which faculty we are from, so that uh, our two dear friends uh, feel more comfortable. Okay, Wilson, start. <laughs> Sandakan, Eliza. Yeah. I'm Zatul from SSS. Yes. I am Pauline from PTSD. Yeah. I'm Eugenia. I'm from PTID. Yeah. And you? Saya Mohd dari PTID. I'm Hafiz from FK Labuan. Labuan. Saya Eman dari FKI. <coughs> yeah, I'm from from uh, FKSW now with a PEP, okay. And our dear friends, Zoo, yeah. <laughs> okay, and you are again. Ajala, okay. So uh, <coughs> let me start off with a slide. Dear friends, uh, this is a time uh, that uh, we will be very open to one another, okay? Uh, we have to realize that now we have a new VC, <laughs> maybe a new Decan, <laughs> okay? So that there can be a lot of changes, not at the horizon, but here right now itself, okay? We will definitely be facing a lot of changes. Um, so even within our e-learning agenda, okay? Uh, we will be expecting change going on. Move, please. For whatever change uh, that is taking place, uh, to facilitate the change, to realize the change, uh, we need agents. And you know who they are. <laughs> in the e-learning uh, agenda in UMS, yes, so we are the one. <coughs> you, me, each and every one of us. Believe me, uh, if any one of us just stay stagnant, whatever that we learn here, we just keep to ourselves, your faculty will remain stagnant. I mean, that, that, that vital, you know, that crucial. We are so crucial. <laughs> we are all so important, okay, uh, to be the agents of change within the faculty and within the pusat, within the institute that we are in. So, uh, may we all who have been uh, appointed by the vice chancellor. All of us are actually VC appointed. Huh? So may we uh, execute this uh, accountability. May we execute, you know, our responsibility as the agents of change. And as agents of change, please remember, you know, a lot of authority are given to you. You're fully empowered. You know, anything that you see is issues or whatever that's going on in your place. You have to bring it back to us, Pusat E Pembelajaran. And then together, you know, we see how to solve it. Okay? We are solution provider over here to drive okay, the e-learning agenda. Yes, <laughs> you. Gandhi has something very good to say. Be the change in the world you want to see in the world. We are always expecting, you know, uh, hey, what is he doing? What is the Pusat doing? <laughs> you know, but uh, let us start with instead of pointing at people, always three fingers are pointing at us. <laughs> always. So let's address ourselves. 
So be the change. Be the change that we want to see in UMS. Okay, move on. So this morning, uh, let us start off uh, with something very intimate. Be bold, please. Be bold. Okay. That uh, what are the issues? What are the concerns that you have in your heart right now? Right now, you know. Be bold. This to articulate up. <laughs> okay. We will consider it definitely. Anything that you know uh, out of concern. This is an immediate concern. All within these four walls. Whatever we discuss is not meant for ears outside. It may be taken out of context. You know what I mean? Huh? It can be taken out of context. Yeah. Anything that is now within your heart that you feel needs to be addressed. Dr. Bhaktia? Students really, you know, um, appreciate the IT technology in education that we are implementing on them. Some of them, they are just doing whatever we are doing for the sake of, they are, you know, they are taking the course. I mean, to just, just, just do whatever we lecturers uh, impose on them yes. uh, without without really um, appreciating or, you know, uh, get the, the, the idea of uh, learning from what we are doing. Dr. Bhaktia bring up a very important issue, you know. Whatever we are doing, are we imposing? Do the students realize our good intention? Or are they being coco, you know, the paksa kan? use this and use that technology <coughs> yeah so do students really appreciate Dr. Patia, thank you for that and it must be reflected by each and every one of us in our different faculty you know are we imposing or are we using something that the students are appreciating when they appreciate of course you know it means that they are learning effectively but not only effectively learning but you know, there is segi uh, kemahiran berfikir secara kritik, critical, innovative thinking. They, they have been developed because of the technology they are using. It's true. We have to consider that. Which also means uh, that if we are applying something that is not supporting students' active, <coughs> meaningful learning, we should actually check ourselves. It's true. <laughs> okay. Very good. Continue to reflect upon that along the way. Do you, do you have a solution on how to make them appreciate? Solution? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. <coughs> Anyone want to say something of how actually your students are appreciating your initiative? Let's reflect upon it. Okay. Uh, anyone else, you know, with respect to lecturers, you feel are not cooperating, not wanting to come on board, you know, hesitant, reluctant, slow, for whatever reason, are you having this experience? Let's be bold just to share to us a little bit. Let's share a little bit. Let's reflect, you know, and see actually how we could actually overcome it. Um, EPIB last um, semester, it was 78%. Huh? So 78% of the LS assignments. 78%, very high. So, but the rest, the number, the percentage of the rest of the number are those who are not keen to go online because they prefer to go on a different platform. Different platform, okay. Because again, um, PPID, it's languages, yes. and they have a uh, different platform that can cater to their special language. Okay. Yeah. Because we have French, we have Jap Japanese. Yes, yes. So they have their own software that they share with their students. Yes. Some sort of like that. Yeah. So what is your response concerning that? They prefer another platform. What is your response to them? 
I, I actually asked them to send their evidence through Smart AMS. Yes. But then again, I think time. Yeah. They told us about the time, they don't. Yeah. And then again, I noticed that they've never even registered. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So <coughs> I don't know whether the percentage is including or not because last semester I noticed that um, the section is open, additional section open, but the teachers have already opened theirs, but the, there's a new section is being opened for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know who opened New, new section? So, so it means double. What does that mean? Uh, yeah. Um, maybe they extract from SMP for the number of classes being open, uh -huh. and they open it to PIB. Uh -huh. So it actually comes with the <coughs> oh, oh. because PIB we usually um, text our Mr. Awang yes to open up for us. Correct. Yeah, but then I don't know. Um, let's say for example, I'm teaching section six, uh -huh. and then there's a different account being open oh. section six. Oh. So when I check the result, section six teacher has already opened hers. But there's another <coughs> account. Uh, that code, the course code and the section number is there, but it's spelled. Mm. It's, it's happening because of the, uh, when you are your, your program coordinator will submit the list to the SMP, SMP and then Avang will directly clone it. Oh. So you don't have to text him again. Oh, you don't so have to it's from him. the yeah. coordinator? Yeah, that's the, that's the procedure from last time. So Avang will take the, directly the data and he creates a database. So if, if you text him again, he will automatically assume that you have not been updated. So, so yeah, he yeah. clones, so you get a dual thing for Okay. That's fine. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In that case, you have to transfer your content. Okay, so I think every one of us might be know this standardized procedure. It didn't happen before this. Only because earlier, the earlier semesters, it was always that way. It was 50 50. Means mm -hmm. Abang used to get a list, it was incomplete. So some of the lecturers used to text oh. it. He used to immediately cater to them without checking the. Oh. Now it's automatic. So if, you, if your course is not, or your, is not in that particular smart to MS category, Means your program coordinator has not submitted the list. So is the list up and running now? Uh, for this semester? If, if it's in, if it's registered, should be the BPA. You will see the, it's ah. a replica of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I should uh, liaise with the coordinator. Also? Yeah, you should liaise with the coordinator. Otherwise, you create a conflict because you have multiple mm -hmm. uh, courses. Yeah. With, so mm -hmm. okay. check that overlap. And anyway, to solve the problem, in the along. I'm sorry, would be the person. He is yeah. the one, isn't he? In charge fully. He's the one who, yeah, just have to phone him. Yeah, ah. so we have to call him to cancel the... Yeah, yeah, okay. But if it's urgent, you know, uh, because the term is starting, you can even find him personally on the spot, he'll do it for you. Okay. He will, he will. He's the only one assigned, you know, to take care of uh, smart UMS. You don't have control over that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, concerning the smart uh, UMS, uh, there's also the new version that's already uh, up there. And they say the next semester, they're going to run uh, these two new versions also. This version. So, uh, come, come. Later on, uh, I think Dr. Kenneth will just update you concerning that. Okay, we have a new version. Um, okay. So I think uh, the what are the issues? Uh -huh. I think you can share a little bit concerning uh, how you make an analysis of uh, those who didn't fulfill uh, compliant. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. The main concern item will be in the this activity part. 
activity part, the 1732, the three activities. So uh, I think this is a very good initiative where they do an analysis concerning uh, those who doesn't comply and they will address it at faculty level. So I think that's very good. So now the thing is how to solve that problem. <laughs> okay, how to solve that problem. Because we have proposed last time, the, we have discussed earlier that we have two day clinic in each faculty. But you need to set a day because all the lecturers cannot come all the time, right? So maybe I can sit for two days in each faculty. And Okay, okay. Okay, so this is where I think uh, FKSW as well as uh, FPP uh, have got a cafe. And then to those who don't uh, comply to the particular minimum, they open at a certain time, they come together, and immediately they solve it for them. Uh -huh. You don't have to be a cafe. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this yeah. cleaning, I mean, that. Yeah, and I, every semester, what I normally do is I will send out email to my program. Yes. Uh, telling them what their BL status is. Ah, okay, day. okay. That's very good. So, and during that time, I would provide my contacts. Okay. And I would even provide the video for them. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason? Uh, Lecturers, they are always sibuk. Yes. Sibuk, you know. Yeah. So, they don't have the time to come to it. Yeah, it's a bit tight. Yeah. Because it's nearing, uh, the due date is nearing towards the Kali Raya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, auditors, uh, we, we need to be also sensitive. Huh? That, uh, when it's near Raya, for example, more time needed. More time needed. Thank you so much. Okay, I think uh, so. Those were the three issues that were mentioned just now. Uh, and number one was uh, Dr. Bakhtia, those who just came in, uh, concerning are we imposing the use of technology on students? Are they appreciating what we're doing for them? Okay, so we we think of a way of actually uh, letting know that it is out of good intention. No, that we paksa them to use, for example, our learning management system. Paksa them to do project using technology and so on. Okay? And then considering how to comply. Can you say something? Uh, yeah. Good morning. Sorry, Robert. Yeah. For Marjorie. faculty, maybe because the MQA. You coincide with something called MQA exercise. Uh, I don't want to push them <coughs> another thing, so just let, let the flow. So maybe the... Okay. Percentage less than last semester. Okay. Because people to be busy prepared all the table. Mm -hmm. Edit. Yeah. Okay. So uh, having said that, uh, it is uh, we we need to actually know that uh, maybe this next coming semester itself they may implement already. You know, concerning the. Uh, LMPT, you know the chart, okay? Teaching and learning, blended learning is one portion, okay? So to get the full mark, uh, they must comply with 1732. That's why there have been uh, no announcement, but you can see it in the chart. The K, K uh, result areas, KRA. Ah, uh, the chart, uh, you can see the thing is there already, but no black and white coming out. I think it's better to announce to the public. But so we cannot announce, it must come from where? Uh? Come from where? Uh? When, when, when must yeah. announce. It cannot come from us. Correct. Yeah. 
Correct, correct. We cannot. Me, yeah, I, mean. I also cannot announce. <laughs> okay. But at least we hint to them, you know, that it's already, you can see it in the KRA chart already. So it's already endorsed already, we know. But they, not gazetted, endorsed, but not gazetted. We make the recommendation to the yeah. Okay. I will follow up. I will follow up. Can I please remember for us to follow up with our pentafta concerning this issue? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at least we see it out. At least, you know, at least. So that when it's really implemented time, huh, people will not blame us. It's true. We have to, they have to make an announcement then. If we really implemented next semester, I have a strong feeling they will implement already. Because already endorsed, I know. At least put some banner in the website. Something in the website. <laughs> make, make, it, I mean, make it public. public transparent. Public, uh, transparent. I mean, yes, yes, yes. yes. Or else uh, people afterwards are miss out, you know. It can be five marks, it, it, but it means a lot. Towards the end, December, and then they will be, you know, keep their, their work with yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. And then keep us. Okay. <laughs> Remember that. Okay, okay. One more uh, issue that I want to say. <coughs> okay, for FPL, usually we share the course. One course, we share two lecturers. Okay. Okay. So, Because the system recognized by cost. By cost. We can request from so, for the PhD But benefit, benefit of that must be given. Uh, because uh, the assumption is, of course, that you know, if there are two people working on the one course, then they should be collaborating, isn't it? Yeah. And he could be providing the material Content. to the young man to say, hey, please have to upload any. So it's contributing already. So I think benefit of that must be given because you're going by cost. Oh, can it? Actually, one of the ways if you want to bypass, I mean, if you want to get, get paid is to deposit your lecture note in the OER first and you link back to the OER. So you still get credited in the OER as a content creator. Okay, so later on, uh, Kendra will share to you concerning this matter of the OER. Now, please remember that whatever that we upload into the OER, it is all marks uh, given to Myra for your faculty, you know. So your faculty will be very appreciative actually our work Definitely, huh? we help to increase. Uh, later on, uh, I will share it to you. Okay? Then whatever that we put into also the uh, OER repository, okay? that can will show you again, you know, that you will go into Google Scholar. And uh, this will improve your citation. Okay? And uh, these days, people are looking for, you know, Kanaikan Pangkat. Uh, Kanaikan Pangkat under the new VC, uh, will be better, better. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I think I can say this because it was declared to all the top management people yesterday. Okay, that Kanakan uh, Pangkat application will be open throughout the year. You don't have to wait for next year. Oh yeah, Baru over already. I miss it. It will be open now throughout the year. So as long as you fulfil, uh, he he will be open. So we're having a new star coming in. <laughs> okay. So he, as long as you meet the minimum and so on, you can apply. So which means, uh, again, you know, that uh, ELMPT, those marks all are very important. To him, we look at figures. You know, he's a very, he look at figures a lot. Okay. I think, uh, yes, okay. So, so, so those are some of the issues that we have raised up. So now, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, okay? Uh, blended learning, are our students really getting the benefit? Or our kitab just bought shocks and jiri sahaja, not just to fulfill KPI. By the way, all this KPI that we are fulfilling is 
KPI we see, you know, Vice Chancellor. Okay, so uh, university actually. Okay, move on. It's supposed to foster hot thinking, higher order thinking. Now, do you think uh, it is supporting that? And I think that goes along what Dr. Bakhtia's concern is. You know, are, are our students are uh, appreciating what we're doing for them? Behind blended learning is actually higher order thinking. Okay. And of course, there are many different models, the different ways you know, that uh, we are doing things. You know, when we get our students to go online to look for a certain material or to critically uh, comment upon one another, actually we are encouraging higher order thinking among them okay, as a community. Go on. Okay. Just reflect upon all these, huh? okay? And then, uh, are we doing the right thing? Please feel free to stop your experience. Blended learning is supposed to facilitate uh, communication. So when we are face to face, okay, communication is limited because of time factor. But the moment we go online, I mean, the moment we put the forum there, everybody are able to now come in to communicate among themselves and with the lecturer. So, are they really getting the benefit of communication online? And in terms of uh, kemahiran uh, komunikasi, uh, there is such a thing called face-to-face -face communication as well as uh, online communication. Uh, these days, we know that you know they are, they are global uh, citizens these days. So they work. The company they might be working later on when they graduate you know, with a company in America. So the communication skill online is so important. Are they getting the benefit? Are they able to collaborate better? Is there online collaboration going on? Face-to-face, -face, of course, is important, but are, are the online environment uh, able to facilitate the group work? Are the 30 people in the class broken into a manageable numbers, you know, five people, not 20 people in a group, not 10 people in a group, five people in a group, so that there is active, you know, mingling and blending among themselves? Because we are afraid nah, that they are always, uh, what do you call it, passive. Passive people, as a lecturer, passive. Huh? Okay. Students also, they can become passive. So people will then complain. Nah. Okay. Students used to tell me, you know, quietly tell me, hey, that one, nah, that contribute apa -apa pun. <laughs> okay. But we have to take note, it's true. Because uh, you have to be fair. You need to be fair. Okay, go on, please. Increase student engagement with the content. We were supposed to bring in the student to interact with the content. And today, the main job uh, actually of uh, Dr. Kenneth is to introduce you into something to make our contents uh, more interactive. So that it goes along uh, with actually ngam ngam with our students' need. Students don't like to just go in and watch these days students. Uh. <laughs> so how could they interact with the content? Okay, so I think we're going to have uh, some exciting time with uh, Dr. Kenneth. Okay. Please have a reflection at the end of this uh, slide. Anything that you feel you want to say. Huh? It's supposed to enhance learning. Are our students really learning better? Certain discipline, they say no, you know. They really need the face-to-face. -face. The real effective learning is face-to-face. -face. This one, ganggu saja. Ganggu. So... Do we have the experience to say that it really facilitates better learning or not? Please move on, Joe. I think maybe the hmm. blended learning can improve student engagement in terms of communications, I mean, doing forums, things like that. But it doesn't necessarily, to, uh, it can improve the quality of learning. Maybe students can engage with us. But the can improve engagement, uh, yeah. but quality so learning not so, so can be questionable. Again, it depends on which particular discipline. Uh, social sciences, they hunt them one another. Yeah. So very good, very critical uh, thinking going on. Uh. Yeah, it's true, depending on what area. Yeah. Is it supporting student-centered learning? So blended learning, you know, we also bring in uh, a lot of time. Uh, individual learning go on. Are we accommodating different learning styles? So, you know, our students, they are all of a different psychological profile. So, uh, 
is blended learning supporting them. Mm. So this, Dr. Pakta, you raised up a very important point, you know. You know, students, uh, we don't expect 100% to say, yes, good, well done. Some people feel uh, this is not a good approach. Memang. Yeah, Prof. I think uh, our students are so uh, used to the one-way... Ah, uh -huh, spoon feed, spoon feed. One way of learning. Uh, yes. They, they would prefer if we just give them the lecture in the class and they, whenever, we, I mean, through my experience, whenever I ask them to start, uh, gather and uh, discuss something, um, they, they start, you know, you can hear them, uh, uh, they show that they are not quite happy with that mm, mm. Uh, way of, uh, you know, interactions in the class. Yes. Uh, discussion and so on. Yes. Uh, Whenever you ask them, would you like to have like a discussion? They, they, you know, directly and openly say that they, they're not keen in, yes. in, in discussion kind of learning. Mm. Uh, so I think um, we we must uh, <coughs> uh, encourage them to to, to start uh, collaborating, you know, uh, communicating among among them. And so on. Otherwise, you know, this I think this is due to the the education system that they've been, you know, yes. all have been, have yes. been having all this yes. while. You know, yes. uh, we never really. I mean, I don't know how the the school system is now. Uh, how the the school pupils are encouraged to uh, to, to interact in, in their classes in. Uh, elementary school and uh, secondary school but yes. <coughs> looking at the product that we are <coughs> teaching them now they, they show some kind of product that you know uh, that they've been uh, produced all this while I think it's more than serious you know okay that uh, we are trying to do with good intention Okay, bring them into groups so they can discuss, they can collaborate. And to them, hey, Bong Masa Saja, I'm here to receive whatever you want to impart. Okay, but we have good intention. Pedagogically, we know that uh, that is called social constructivist learning. But they don't know, they don't know. But we know. Okay, so we must insist to go on to practice this kind of uh, healthy pedagogical practices. It's true. One of the reasons why graduates employability comes in okay uh, you know they're in the industry the moment they come for call for interview it means all of you lie up and out of 100 people they want only 10 people and when they call 10 people they come around dr Edmund will be able to tell you uh, they don't talk ask you about your content anymore about your degree anymore assumption all oh, some are already now okay i give you a problem now dalam kumpulan masing-masing you bincang you selesaikan and they'll be observing how in the world you discuss problem, how you collaborate, how you solve problems. So they kind of soft skills, you know. And that's how they pick up people these days. Something like that, Dr. Amin. Huh? In the industry, they are looking something more than that degree. More than that degree. Communication. Communication, there you are. And how you communicate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think very important feedback. Very important feedback. Thank you. Yeah, go on. Okay, just a few more. Yes. Extend the course in space and time. So the moment we go blended learning, you know, it's now up there already. Uh, across time and space, our students, for whatever reason, represent a UMS is absent, but he can he will not miss the lesson. Okay, you can come into our online place because it's available in time and space there. Okay, go on. There's flexibility. Okay, uh, go on. Opportunities for engagement, as I visit put it. Nah. Very good tool for engagement. Okay, go on. <coughs> Flexible learning pace. Okay, so again you know our students uh, some of them they want to interact you now once with the content some you need three times to interact before they get it they need to replay that video two times before they get it go on uh, 
help construction of knowledge through community of practice. So this is what we want actually to practice. Community of practitioners, community of learners. So make sure that you know, we make into a viable a small group. Okay? Don't let 30 people in one group want to discuss. They'll be passive. And the moment you know, they will lose the track and so on. Okay. Promote learner control. Okay. Uh, students want to be in control these days. You know, they don't expect them to be like a TV sitting there passively. They, they will jump. Okay? So your content is placed in such a way that uh, probably A and B, I know already, I want to jump into C. You know? So under learner control, we call it. Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, with respect to the uh, reflection, um, I don't know how the candidate, you know, because all of us are having different experiences huh, uh, across the faculty, and every one of us have different so called problems and issues. So, if we can continue to have a platform, sometimes uh, Dr. Kenner sends out you know, some Google form and then we give some feedback, or the sort analysis, get some feedback. But could we have a place you know, where we actively uh, put in some issues, or share some experiences, or share some success mutually? You know? Let there be some kind of uh, mutuality to support one another. Uh, the experience that they have in Laban, you know, can be so useful over here. It only can be shared, and it just need a few lines only, you know, many times being exposed. What kind of a platform do you think we can have? Yeah, yeah. WhatsApp group? Community, yeah. community practice. WhatsApp group, okay. WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, there you are. But different WhatsApp group. A different WhatsApp group. Yeah. Something where there's a threat, you know, so that if there are three issues there, then uh, they can jump to that issue one or issue three to impart. So that WhatsApp is a problem because, you know, there's a chronology there. We had COP, but nobody engaged there. Okay. Actively. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Very good. COP, yeah. So this is something that this time we say that uh, we will have to bring it. I'll just bring this matter up, please. Huh? Because we need to encourage everybody to come on board. There's an international uh, actually forum for TEL practitioners, okay, and we can play a part. Okay, and all these, uh, whatever part that you do, uh, eventually you can cut and paste, uh, and put it into your resume in due time for your kanaka pangkat. This is international, you know. You're involving. You're a global player. Anything that we spend time in, please remember, uh, kanaka pangkat time, you know. Everything counts, everything counts, okay? You don't need a grand money uh, to say that it is now uh, laku, no. Uh, anything that you do, okay? <coughs> Maybe having said that, uh, I think I will say one more thing, okay? Uh, I come from USM, okay? And to them, uh, the mindset of people is, hey, other grant, other grant, other grant. But I tell you, no grant, Hey, no research done, no publication. Wrong concept, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Many times we do work uh, with our students, tak perlu money, no need. <laughs> so, uh, in your application, those days in USM, of course, you know, we can put our category, but uh, is there a place where, you know, without grant, you know, your research is also listed, not funded. No? Publication comes up from that research. That's what the university wants. But it's a non-funded one. Okay? And these days, of course, you know, we go for OER. So whatever that you publish, you know, open a... You can look at the SMPPI. The, the SMPPI system permits you to attach links to repositories as well. So they're under non-index category. It's publication. So it's just muscles can wait for them to verify. Yes. So you upload to repository inside the link. The, the repository link is live link. It's always yes, live yes. link. Mm. Okay. I, I just typed it out there. Okay, they verified it. Yeah, yes, I did. So, I so these are the little things, you know, that uh, if we can have a platform and then uh, we know of this, we try it out and then we share it with our colleague. Everybody, sama sama, you know, get the benefit. Okay. This is a TPEC model. And. Uh, very, just very briefly, very briefly, okay? <coughs> it comprises actually of uh, three circles, okay? 
This circle is all contain knowledge. So this is where all the lecturers are, it's a pakar. We are the expert in this area. Okay? And those that are pendidikan, then they know something called pedagogy. So they will know that, you know, uh, other strategic pendekatan to teach the particular content. Medical, engineering, computer, programming, all different pendekatan. You cannot say that mine is the best way. Different styles, you know, of approaches. The dancing, the music, they have different approaches. So there are different pedagogy. So there's a need uh, to know that actually when these two come together, pedagogy, content, knowledge is so important. So uh, the thing called pedagogy is just, you know, the pendekatan, uh, the approach. Uh, it can be very, very varied. Okay. Okay. Then technology come in. And again, technology and the particular content need to be appropriate. So again, Dr. Patia, you, you give a very important point, you know. Are we using the right tool so that students appreciate? Or are we using the wrong tool and that's how the whole content now is supposed to be so simple, it sounds so complicated. Are our pedagogy that we are using with that technology correct or not? So, we, we, this is a micro aspect already, okay? So, we have to consider that. And I think that is where uh, Madeline, after you share with us concerning the uh, particular forum, uh, is supposed to actually have a whole world, you know, will come there. And then they can share concerning their experiences on actually technology enhanced learning. You will incorporate these three, okay? So, then when these three come together, that is where the TPEC come in. How uh, certain content, we need to consider the appropriate approach, pedagogy, and the appropriate tool. Having said that, the appropriate tool might be just a paper and a pencil. We have to be very open to that. Don't have to use a very complicated uh, big Mercedes to drive from uh, 10 kilometers away. <laughs> you know? Okay. Please move on. So, when we talk about blended learning, uh, basically we are having 1732 as our benchmark. Yes, and there's still 1732 at the moment. Okay, but there's something new coming up. Not to get The moment we get we will update one another. But there is one approach. One and blended learning got different model. Okay, so one simple model. Some of us are practicing this. Example. Uh, students go and study things online. Or here, uh, this is a traditional way of our web-based learning. A traditional way of, you know, the teacher is face-to-face uh, -face with the student. Go on. So, the question about blended learning is, could this teaching, face-to-face, -face, be recorded and pass it over here? Move on. So, which means that the student now at home can consume this at home can spend his time watching your introduction of a new concept some may need five minutes some may need 30 minutes all <coughs> done outside the classroom and when they come to the classroom there you are it now become actually in class activities so the teacher is now available to address problem raised up by the student okay and this is called the flip classroom. So the flip classroom is one of the model, one of the pedagogical model of our blended learning. Uh, again, you know, many students expect uh, introduction of concept face-to-face, uh, -face, okay? But this one, very bold. So do we dare to do it? Uh? Try it out, try it out, okay? Uh, our students, we must assume, uh, give them a higher expectation of a student. They will live up to your expectation. That's my experience. Huh? Okay? You raise up the bar of expectation, they will live up to our expectation. And they will have a more valuable time of actually uh, precious time with us interacting. MIT follow this concept very closely. MIT are the first people where all the lectures are recorded 
all the lectures are shared freely to the world. So you can also use yes, they're all creative common, all, all of them. You boleh pakai, no problem. To them, itu bukan pendidikan. To them, my video put there for you, ma, and you go and download and use it, it's not real learning. The real learning is, come and interact uh, with our professor. So it's actually a promotion, you know, that we put all the good uh, videos there for you, and come, enroll yourself. So the real learning is taking place when we interact with the professor. Move on. So we are in blended learning, okay? So blended learning is really the best of two worlds. Uh, our face-to-face -face time and also the online. Now we merge the best of these two worlds together. And there are different models to it. One of them is a free classroom example, okay? Bloom taxonomy is something that uh, guides each and every one of us, okay? This one is, for example, concerning the cognitive domain. Uh, they are also, of course, the effective and the motto. Uh, some of us are teaching dancing and so on. It's a different role. Uh, Bloom taxonomy starts with remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. So it goes from lower order thinking to higher order thinking. Okay, move on. So traditional classroom, the teacher introduced a new material to the student and we are covering actually this part. This part, okay? Imagine, you know, the best time uh, for us with the student, we are introducing this all. And then after that, we give them the assignment and say, Bale, uh, you pitch your bus or any. You can solve this problem. And it is here. Students are responsible for the homework in this level of understanding. And this is where at home, they crack their head. How to do this, how to do that. They put up their hand, nobody is around to help them. Okay? Move on. Hence, blended learning comes in. So you see, there is a reason, you know, for blended learning. A lot of research work done in this. That new material is now introduced to the student at home. Like just now. They look at this, this is a basic. Okay. Now, the problem solving, students and the teachers are together in the classroom, in the tutorial room, in the lecture theater. Change the style of lecture theater. Change the format. Okay. Okay. I think it's very clear. Huh? So, this is where blended learning comes in. The, the, the difficult part, the Facilitator, the teacher, the lecturer is now with the student. He will keep the student happy. Dr. Bhaktia, he really will keep them happy now. Okay. Yeah. So, very quickly, okay, uh, whatever we are doing, cognitive aspect, huh? uh, because now in blended learning, online things are available, where the video are there, so multimedia is now available for them. It could be a video, it could be animation or whatever. So please remember that uh, we are trying here to get them to develop, uh, to form, uh, develop new knowledge, new understanding. So how could <coughs> multimedia that is now being displayed, okay, uh, it comes through our ears and our eyes, and how could they be selected so that it goes into the working memory, okay? So we, we keep things short and simple. Huh? Uh, in the PowerPoint, in the video production, uh, there are certain principles uh, to not to overburden cognitively. Uh. Okay, go on. Three assumptions. I'll just touch on this. So, cognitive theory of multimedia learning is a uh, code, code, you know, that is actually pendidikan in the world of pendidikan. Uh, how people learn from multimedia, this Richard Mayer is a guru, a real to guru. Okay. And he says that and a lot of research work, thousands and thousands of us, research work have been based upon this theoretical framework. So two separate channels for processing information. It goes to the eye, it goes to the ear. Okay, go on. And the two channels, limited capacity. So this is where if you give too much for the eye to see, the sumbat, not everything will go in here. We want everything to go in. Okay, so make sure that, you know, we do not uh, have a cognitive overload. Too much, it becomes overloaded, overloaded. It's all overloaded, you can have optimal processing. Go on. 
And learning is indeed involving, you know, selection. So when we are presenting many things, you know, uh, make sure that they are scaffolding, make sure they are signaling and so on. So as that particular thing is now the focus of the student, uh, then it will be able to go in, be able to go in, okay? And it will be organized and integrated. And prior knowledge will come in. So please remember to address prior knowledge. Uh, many times there are some uh, pop-up, you know, for them to click and then to get a definition of certain uh, istilah and so on. You don't have to get out from the system, okay? So you know. Okay? So that is where I think uh, the one that is going to be introduced by Dr. Kenneth, we will be able to actually uh, help produce something that is able to accommodate uh, this model. Okay, go on. Okay, I'll go on, go on. Okay, I'll go on. Yeah, so there's uh, three processes, active processes. Okay. Now, having said that this is the cognitive uh, domain, uh, okay, then there is Sergi, this is con the cognitive level, okay? Usually in Pendidikan, we call it behaviorist, cognitivist level, and then constructivist level. So this is a constructivist level, which means that uh, our student, Actually, their learning uh, actually is constructed among themselves or by themselves. So, the top here is a constructivist theory by Vygotsky. Okay, and it says that you know uh, the subject at the student, okay, and using the different tools is able to facilitate uh, the particular outcome, learning outcome. And then Angus Strom, another person, comes in and say. Hey, let me extend this uh, Vygotsky triangle down. And he says that learning takes place in a social context, which means that let there be group work. That's why we want group work. Lah. Group work is based upon this theory. People don't know why we bring them into groups, you know. It's this, this one. That community, okay, and sometimes we can have uh, different uh, rules for them. Some of them may take the lead, some of them may be the moderator, some of them may be the recorder or whatever. We have reasons to give them a division of labor, you know, and then a rules, hey, all the brief kinds of supplement minute, huh? Okay, and so on. After that, you must come and uh, present it or present it before your group first and then present it before everybody and then everybody must give the comment, give your comments huh, on uh, whatever forum, you know, that you give them. So, give rules, make it clear, okay, uh, and then this is called the activity model. Um, so our work actually of blended learning is actually all theoretically based. And a lot of research work done on this. You just have to type huh? social constructivist theory, blended learning, boom, you get a lot of it. Huh? Uh, cognitive learning and blended learning. You can see a lot of work done. Okay, move on. Okay, so basically I just want to cover that. Uh, this one just scanning through. Uh, this is our new uh, strategic and uh, action plan for UMS. Uh, this is the latest. This is the latest. Uh, number one, just to upgrade everybody. Okay. Establishing quality and quantity of technology and learning. So, we, in this case, huh, uh, we have a lot of uh, in house training going on. At the same time, we have a commonwealth of learning coming to support us. Academic sub training, okay, establishing quality student training, uh, mainstreaming of e learning. By the way, instead of uh, sub training, uh, we are looking for trainers. So each and every one of you are entitled to come forward, please. You have so much experience. So, in one way or another, uh, as long as you're willing, you just inform uh, Dr. Kenneth, okay? Yes, uh, we will accommodate you to help us because uh, we want to increase the frequency of training. <laughs> We really want to. In any area, you know, that you feel uh, it's the right thing that should be introduced, we will consider. Okay. Uh, Ministry of e-learning, uh, organization structure, change management, uh, globalization of UMS e-learning. Okay, so, okay. Anyway, you can see this in our website, PEP. Okay, move on. And again, all this is to support actually our KRA, okay? And one of them as listed already is blended learning under teaching and learning. This is introduced to the management. Okay, go on. 
Again, we ask that our this uh, pembelajaran terajun, our blended learning, is really realizing pembelajaran dalam talian tahap global. Huh? Okay, go on. Blended learning, again, education blueprint, our DEPAN, is still version 2, okay? And our plan pembangunan pendidikan Malaysia, oh, same thing. Okay, go on. Still version 2 is being used, and they expect that 50% in this. By 2025, 70% uh, will be blended learning online. Okay, go on. So, this year we are here, 48%. Uh. Last year was 45, now we are 48. Okay, go on. Uh, this is from uh, MQA. Okay, so it says that the conventional way, okay, uh, teaching and learning, okay, bersebuka muka, face to face, sepenuhnya, dalam bentuk kuliah, tutorial, and so on, and dikendalikan mengikut tempo pengajian atau dengan gabungan pembelajaran dalam talian, blended learning, 30 to 60%. MQA use 60%. <laughs> Up to 60%. So they calculate anti 60%. But then we put until 70%. Okay. And then, uh, if exceed 60%, MQA says uh, that is uh, ODL already, open distance learning. That means uh, fully online. So this is MQA. So we okay. can use up to 60%? Or? No, but according to the definition of ministry, uh, yeah, until 70%. <laughs> okay. Until 79%, in fact. Okay, go. But we will stick to that one. Uh. But this MQA, I, I have a chance to confirm yet. Okay, go on. Okay, so traditionally, no technology supporting. Okay, here is if it's more than eighty percent. Okay, uh, okay, this one comes from the ministry. Uh, uh, belum gazetted. That's why uh, we cannot share out the book yet. Uh, <coughs> of course, when most of all the content is developed online, typically no face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, Plume one day will go to this level, our plume. Okay. And here they put it as nah, 30 to 79 percent. It's on the ministry level. I say tangam dengan MQA, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So we are here. We are here. Okay, move on. So whatever we are doing is all on track according to in compliance with our ministry. Okay. This is the 1732 that they're talking about, okay? And the one we know is the synopsis, the syllabus, table four, Kandungan uh, Sumber, okay? Normally it's a dog, SCOM, Pumbule, PDF. Pautan ke media social dan web 2.0. Okay. So the one where they say they use other platform, no problem, is recognized over here. And then activities. Hmm. Forum is the most common. Portfolio, weekly, discussion. Look at that. Email and messenger. They are listing it here now. So even email can be taken to be an evidence as well. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, we didn't think of that. So they are now very open, broader already. This is the one you know. Uh, this is the latest. The one that I received. I received this actually from uh, from the Pengurusi of Mepta. But he say the particular book tak boleh make public yet because uh, not endorsed yet. Uh, they got the ISBN, but inside there, uh, st still got empty places. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Uh, they need endorsement and certain things to fill in. So, this is the thing coming. It's coming, okay? It will come. So, I think. What is the name? Oh, activities. Uh, here is synchronous. So I think. Real time, in real time. We have a big blue button for that. We have a big blue button system. This is actually permitting you to interact with the student using a platform. What's that? Skype? Ma? I will show you. Skype. Works, real time. Okay. Uh, Tidak uh, segera means uh, asynchronous, not in real time. Okay. 
macam email lah, messenger lah. Okay, so my map mah, yeah. Who use my map mah among our students? My map, a very powerful tool actually. My master actually. Ah uh ah, -uh. so making my map and you can tell the student. Even though we don't know, we tell our students, you know, hey, make sure you go and use my map to conclude uh, your project or the beginning of the project or after your project. They will know what to do. Huh? <coughs> because within that particular uh, illustration or ask them to produce an infographic, they will know what to do. Okay? To summarize uh, your project. <laughs> we don't have to know it. We don't have to master all the program. Just tell the student, it's their tools. Okay, and of course, uh, this portfolio Kajang K Journal Gasa Quiz Project. Okay, move on. This is a uh, guide to blended learning. Uh, this Google, uh, Congo Web Learning, guide to blended learning is available CC. You can use any of the portion. So please use this uh, as our guide. <coughs> it's produced by Congo Web Learning. So they have uh, different models of uh, blended learning inside here also. Okay, move on. And of course, our policy. Uh, please go through our policy because here is listed uh, our commitment to actually our key stakeholders, our commitment to our students, our commitment to our lecturers, our commitment uh, by the university is actually all here. So if you feel you, you think that things are not right, you know, uh, you can refer to this and bring it to us. Okay, this was produced under JTMT, PTPTA, as well as uh, PTP. This has been uh, gazetted <coughs> by the Senate. 